Hey, what's up? It's Brianna. So today we're going to be using the Just a Glitch palette from the ColourPop Y2K collection. Honestly, I just had to have the rest of this collection. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just totally my vibe and I like the colors of it. But oh, like this palette right here is just so unique. Honestly, I'd probably say this is one of the most unique color stories I've ever seen from ColourPop because it's kind of like this minty seafoam green mixed with pale purple. And I don't know, I just, there's something about it that just really drew me into it. So I just, I needed to try it today. And also I did pick up the pale purple highlighter and this one's called Still Loading. And I have been looking for a shade like this for the longest time. So I'm really excited to see how it applies. Now with this collection, I also picked up the new Millennium palette, so if you'd like to see a video on that, let me know in the comments down below. And I also picked up two of the other Super Shock shadows that I didn't have, and I'll be honest, I don't think either of these would go with this palette. Like, the purple one called Low Rise is kind of like a smokier purple, and it just doesn't seem like it would pair that well with this palette. And the other Super Shock shadow called In the Saddle, this one's like a peachy pink, and again, I just don't think it fit the vibe. So I don't know how I'm going to use these Super Shock shadows, but I guess I'll figure it out. So I just spread my eyes off camera, but the first shade I want to go in with is the purple in here, and this one's called T9. And this one kind of has like a little star shape in here. And I also will warn you, it is a little bit powdery in the pan, like you just want to be a little bit careful with it. It's not like terribly dusty, but again, it does have a little bit of kickback. But I'm just going to be taking it on this dome brush from Morphe. This is from the Madison Beer Collection. And I'm just going to be popping it in the inner half of my crease. Ooh, ooh that, that's more pigmented than I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more on my brush. One of my favorite formulas of ColourPop is their pastels. Like, I don't know what it is about them, but they're just really easy to work with and use. Hopefully I don't regret putting the purple here because when I looked at the palette, like the green shimmer looked a little bit deeper. So that's the one I wanted to use on the outer edge because of it. But now I wonder if the purple is going to be deeper, like this matte one, than the green. So it's going to look a little bit funky. I guess we will figure that out. But again, for a pastel, like this one's applying really, really nice. I will say it is a little bit more on the buildable side. Like don't get me wrong, like right away it does have a lot of pigment to it. But you can definitely get it a little bit deeper if you do a couple layers to it. Which I personally like because it's going to give you a little bit more versatility with this palette. Because again, it is a 5 pan. So now let's dip into the Minty Seafoam Matte Shade. And this one's called HTML. And oh my gosh, I used to be so obsessed with doing HTML and like MySpace layouts and like coding them and doing stuff like that. I don't know if you guys are into that or not. But I just love like designing things and like making it look really cool. But again, I'm just going to be taking this shade on this brush from uh, Anastasia. It's an A10. It's like a pinch blending brush. But I used to be so obsessed with like designing like my page and making it look like a certain way and like very aesthetic. But I'm just taking this shade and applying it to the outer half of my eye. Yeah, see this is what I mean. Like the green is lighter than the purple. Maybe if we build it up, maybe it will work in our favor. I will say though, this green is very buildable. Now let's go in with a third layer. And again, I am overlapping it with T9 right in the center here. Just to make sure we get a really good blend between the two. And I'm just going to go in with a little bit more, but one thing I am noting with this shade is I am having to keep on going in with more on my brush. Like for some odd reason, this shade is just really adhering to my eye primer. Like it's not hard to like blend out or, and it's not like giving me any like chunkiness. It's just like really like grabbing onto it for some reason. And I don't know if it's because it's like a pastel or what it is because normally I don't have this happen with ColourPop's formula or this primer. And I will warn you too, this shade does have a little bit of follow to it. So I would definitely do your eyes before your face if you decide to use this one. So I just cut my crease off camera and now I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more of HTML, but I'm gonna be taking it on this little shader brush from Luna Magic. And essentially what I'm going to do is just pack it on the edge to mask that harsh line of the cut crease, just so it doesn't look so choppy on the outer edge. So now let's start popping some shimmers on the lid, and I'm first going to go in with that minty shade called Chat Room. And I'm just going to be taking it on this little flat shader brush. Again, I'm applying it dry. I don't like to apply shimmers damp. I know a lot of people do, but I've learned over time that, you know, like the dampness makes them a little bit more like spicy looking. But unfortunately, it's so much harder to blend into a matte that I don't know 
if it's exactly worth it. I'm just going to be popping this in the outer half and <laughs> that is a good shimmer. Like normally Colourpop has been having these like wearable kind of shimmers and don't get me wrong like they're really cute but I miss this like pizzazzy like extra sparkly ones and this one right here is one of those. I'm like oh, it just looks so cool. And I'm also kind of feathering it into HTML on the outer edge. But seriously, like, I only dipped once, and I mean, just look at how much payoff we got. So for the inner part of the lid, I'm just going to be going in with the purple shimmer, and this one's called Take a Bite, and Bite is spelled like Megabyte, so B-Y-T-E. I don't know, I just think that's really cute. This one definitely has kind of like a technology kind of theme to it, which I really like, because honestly, like, I'm really into computers and, like, gaming and whatnot, so this one's, like, really my vibe. Like, both the color story and, like, even, like, the shade names. Like, there's just something so fun about this one. But again, I'm just going to be taking this on a little shader brush, and I'm going to be applying it dry again. And, ooh, that one is not as sparkly, so I'm going to go in with a second layer. Yeah, like, this one's more of, like, a wearable shimmer. I'm a little bit bummed because, again, the other shade was just, it's so cool and just has so much dimension to it. I was really hoping that this one would, too. But unfortunately, it just doesn't. Again, it has like a pretty sheen to it. It just doesn't have like that punchy wow factor. And when I say wearable shimmer, I mean it's not like a satin and it's not like a super like sparkly extra kind of shimmer. It's like right in the middle. So I just did my complexion products off camera, but let's do the lower lash line. And I'm first just going to go in with that HTML shade on this little shader brush from the Morphe Madison Beer Collection. And again, I'm just going to be popping this in the about inner half. I'm kind of matching what we did up in the crease. And then next I'm just going to go in with T9 and pop it in the inner half. Again, in the center I am slightly overlapping the two. And then lastly for the inner corner highlight, I'm just going to go in with this icy kind of shade in the palette and this one's called Dial Up. I had Dial Up internet growing up and let me tell you that shit was so slow, like you could barely do anything on it. And I remember like having to like call into it and it making like that, you know, right, right, noise. You know what I'm talking about. If you had dial up, you know what I mean. And like I used to get so frustrated with it. But I'm just going to be taking this shade on a Anastasia A14 little pencil brush. Again, I'm applying it dry. Ooh, that's a cute little like silver shade. And I got an eye boogie there. I wasn't sure if it was going to have like a purple undertone or like a blue undertone, but it's like a true like icy silvery kind of shade. A little bit more on the white side though. I'm just going to go in with a second layer. Oh yeah, that fits the palette perfectly. And I am just going to go back in with that brush that we applied T9 with, and I'm just going to kind of like feather the edge a little bit more. Ooh, I really like that as an inner corner. Honestly, I feel like the shade you make a really pretty, like, highlighter in general, especially if you like really icy ones. And then lastly, I'm just going to go in with the Super Shock Highlighter in Still Loading, which is the lavender one. And I remember the You Got Mail one, the kind of like baby pink one, and all that one applied more like a blush on me because it's just so pigmented. So I'm going to treat this one actually like a shimmery blush because of it. So I'm just going to be taking it on this brush from ColourPop, and this is a F32. This is a brush I really like to use with blushes. So I don't have any blush on right now. I literally just have bronzer because I'm just assuming that this one's going to be pretty pigmented. Yeah, like, it's already looking that way. But let's see what happens. And if all feels, I can always just apply a blush afterwards. It's not a big deal. Ooh, I like that one way more than you got mail. Like, it's icy, it has some pigment to it, but it's not, like, overpowering, because I feel like You Got Mail was just way too pink, and it was just too bright, and in some ways it almost looked a little bit choppy. Like, it really just clung on to my dry patches, and it just kind of made my skin look a little bit more textured, and it emphasized all the texture that I have on my cheeks. Whereas this one, I don't feel like is doing that. I am going to apply a little bit on my nose. But I will say this highlight is very blinding. Like, if you do not like a blinding, super sparkly highlighter, you're probably not going to like this one. And this highlight, though, does not have glitter in it. It's like a wet sheen kind of blind. It's not like that glittery kind. But, ooh, I love that. This shade would make a really, really pretty eyeshadow, too. 
Words cannot express how obsessed I am with how this turned out. Like, it's pastel, it's colorful, it's super sparkly, like, totally my vibe. I'm gonna have such a hard time washing this off tonight because I just love how it turned out. But again, like, both of these items are really nice and just so underrated. Honestly, I'm surprised that more people aren't talking about them because they're just so different and unique. And they just have really nice formulas. Because again, like, the eyeshadow palette, I've never seen a color story like this before. And the mattes in here, you know, even though they are pastel, they're not, like, chalky or dusty. They have a really nice pigmentation to them. You know, this green shade right here called HTML. Now, this one is a little bit more on the buildable side. Whereas the purple shade called T9, now, this one is pretty pigmented right away. But again, if you're okay with that, the pastels in here are really nice. And the shimmers though, oh, they are so pretty, especially this chat room shade. Like it just has so much dimension to it. And it's just like a wow factor. Like it's just absolutely stunning when applied. The other two in here are a little bit more on the wearable side, but don't get me wrong, they're still really cute. And this Super Shock highlighter, like let me tell you, I've been trying to find a purple highlighter for the longest time that doesn't apply a little bit more on the pink side or like gray side. Because I feel like a lot of times they either lean a little bit too gray or they lean a little bit too pink. Whereas this one, absolute perfection because it's kind of like an icy, like lavender kind of shade. Like I don't know what it is about it, but oh, like it just looks absolutely beautiful. And for a blinding highlight, it doesn't have like that glittery kind of look to it. It's definitely more of like that like wet sheen kind of vibe, which I definitely prefer. I feel like a lot of people are just really sleeping on these items, especially this highlighter. And I will say out of the two highlighters that launched with this collection, I definitely prefer this one. I feel like You Got Mail just really emphasized like the texture on my skin. It also looked a little bit choppy in those areas too. I don't know. I, I didn't mind the formula, but I just prefer this one way more. But yeah, so in the comments down below, let me know what you think about this look as well as this collection. And also let me know if you like to see the new Millennium palette used or not. But as always though, before you go, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on Instagram or TikTok, it's at Brianna Faye as well. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!